Hello and welcome to New Junction. Now today's video is rather special because I won't be hosting it. Um, in a moment I'll be handing you over to Jason at Barnabas Junction, a fellow YouTuber, someone with a quality channel, as he's going to show you all how to make these. Now between the two of us we've uh, made a few of these. Um, these are flower beds which fit perfectly onto uh, stations and in this case my heritage line station so without further ado over to Jason thanks Richard for that introduction um, right okay welcome to Barnabas Junction um, today we're going to be showing a little bit about some um, plaster of Paris molds that you can do to make your own scenic items for your model railway now the casts that I plan to use are made by this company here. These are made by Scaled Cast. They do a wide variety of casts and are cheaply available online. As you can see on this leaflet we have a wide variety of moulds displayed um, and over 200 as it says there and they are available to be viewed on YouTube. The website is scalecast.co.uk so if you want to have a look at some additional moulds that they do please pop over to their website or YouTube channel. They also have a Facebook page so give them a look up on there. So the mould that we've got in question is this one. The mould itself doesn't look too that much here on the video but what we intend to do is making some flower tubs to be used on the likes of your platforms, your scenic areas around your towns and villages on your layout. I already have a large bag of plaster Paris here, one kilogram bag. Uh, this was cheaply enough available at a local hobby craft store um, for about just a couple of pounds. I say it's one kilogram bag and you'll make absolutely loads of this item this mold even with just this one bag i'd say several hundred to be honest maybe even more full instructions on how to use the plaster of paris are available on the back so what we'll do on is we'll get on and see how these molds are made okay so as the instructions state on the packaging it does state um to weigh it out your mixture that you want to make but we only want to make a small amount for this mold it does state to use one part water to two parts powder so we'll need a clean container to produce this so we have our jug of water a little tub for mixing and as we're only doing a small amount just a nice teaspoon or dessert spoon will be ample to mix measure and mix your mixture Okay, so let's get some powder. Okay, so now I'm going to do these to heat. So that's a very large heat there. So that, we'll count that as two, two parts powder, one large heat. Um, so and we'll do two large heaps. There we go should be enough for this mould. Give that a shake. It's one part water. So we need, but we've put four in there. So one, two, three, four. That should be enough. We'll mix that together. As you can see, it's going into a nice thick paste. It's always to put, best to put a little bit too less than what you actually need, as you can always add, but you can never take away. Let's mix in nicely. Lovely 
mixture there. Make sure you've got no dry powder whatsoever left in your mixture. And you don't want it to be too thick. Otherwise you'll get lots of air bubbles in the mixture and will reduce its strength of the mould or create holes in your mould with air bubbles too. So that looks like that's nice mixed together, so let's move that out of the way. But yes, we want to mix it well and slowly as to not uh, create any air bubbles. Do not beat it, as in like an egg, as this will give it air. Just stir it nice to create a lovely smooth consistency. And I think we're just about right there. And if you look carefully, you'll see air bubbles just there. Those will eventually dissipate. Just shaking like that, you can see them popping up as it smooths out. You can see them working their way up to the surface, which is good. That means we've got a good consistency there, ready for going into the moulds. So, here we have the mould. Now, to make these a lot easier to withdraw out of here, what we just need to want, we want to do is just give the, the mould a quick spray with water. Just so it's damp. This just helps with removal of the uh, mould once it's set. Okay, so we'll now go on and fill the mould. Now, as you can see, we have plenty on there, and we just want to press it in into the mould to make sure we've expelled all air from within. I know it's a bit messy, but that's all the fun. And we can Scrape off any excess as we're using it and reapply as we wish. As you can see, we've got gaps, so we spread it about a bit more. We just keep spreading until we have completely filled the mould and we're happy that there's no air left within each pot. As this is a teaspoon, it's quite rounded, so it does squish. The items out so what I like to do at this point is just get a little metal ruler just like so and just slide that across the top Let me just scrape that one. which is great to capture any that you're not going to be using Excess. Uh -huh. 
when you're happy with that we then want to expel any air bubbles that may be still within and to simply do that we just tap on it and you will actually see any air bubbles within be expelled as you can just saw there any air bubbles that are within will come to the surface doesn't need much too much done and not to worry if it's not perfectly smooth I think we'll be okay with that. There we go. Now with that done, we just leave that for a short while to allow them to dry. Depending on your room temperature, that can be anything from 30 minutes to a couple of hours. But it's best to leave it as long as possible to ensure a good, strong, solid mold has been produced. So. I'll leave them that to dry and we'll be back shortly. Welcome back and we have now successfully waited for this to dry. Might have only seemed a few seconds for you but this was quite a while waiting for this to dry to make sure we've got some really good solid mould. Um, so what we're going to do now and um, we're going to take these out of here and see how they've developed. So we, we go live on camera. What we do is gently bend the mould. As you can see, you can just see them starting to break away. Now they are very fragile, so you've got to be very gentle with them. Just basically loosening them off to the point where they will pop out. And there we go, we've got the first one that's coming out. There it is. There we go. There's one. Here comes another. Obviously, the longer you leave them to dry, the less fragile I'd say they are. Um, these have been left for quite a few hours, these have. So they're not 100% set I would say but they're only only tiny anyway so they should dry quite well and they could should set quite well but they do recommend the bigger you the item you make the longer you should leave them um, anything up to two out uh, two days you reckon anything up to two days yeah so there you go that's six taken out of the mold uh, I'll just bring them up now there are still some slight imperfections and this is due to bubbles not quite as you can see there just on the corner that means that's where there was an air bubble so it didn't quite get out but that's fine when these are painted up they'll be absolutely superb as you do get them not 100 perfect you do get with bricks missing slabs missing in the real world so those will be really good to be painted up and there we have six all ready for painting so i hope you like that um you can see how easy they are to make and how cheap they are to make i think the mold itself was about nine pound but for them because it can be used over and over and over and over again it's great because you can be overwhelmed with the amount that you can make just for that simple nine pound instead of going out and buying yourself the bag of plaster of paris was about a pound pound two pounds something like that and there is loads in there i could probably make in excess of a couple of hundred with just that one bag so that's them done so now it's time to pass you back over to richard where he'll show you these over at new junction so let's buy from barnabas junction Bye.
and thank you very much Jason. And here they are on the uh, New Junction painting table. What we're going to do now is uh, mix some of the Humbrel paints together. I use uh, a mix of the Matte 29, Matte 113, Gloss 19 and Matte 33 all together just to make a, uh, a base coat of the sort of ready black uh, brick colour. So that's what we're going to do next. We'll paint them in. And there we are, in all their glory. They've uh, added some real life to this platform. As you can see, I've put a few in. I've put some next to the waiting uh, um, shelter. And then uh, there's a few more further down. As you can see, it just adds another level of detail, another layer of detail to this platform. Um, and it really does bring it to life. So once again, thank you very much to uh, Jason at uh, Barnabas Junction check out his channel um, the link is above in the corner now um, but otherwise thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one take care bye